As the days pass, the temperature rises higher and higher. Water falls from the sky less and less often. Even though I know Connie's not coming back, I still miss her. I miss the sound of her strong voice. I even miss the smell of the bitter beans and hot water that she and Jake drank in the morning on, at the canine facility when they shared words back and forth. Sometimes my stomach aches with missing her and I whimper. But the ache isn't constant. Sometimes I'm so busy playing watch me or touch with Chloe that my stomach forgets to ache. Other times the ache comes on in a sudden crash, like the other day when a tall woman with short hair visited the farm. Her small car rattled like Connie's. The woman even wore clothes like Connie's with metal objects clipped to her belt and patches with designs attached to the sleeves. I wagged my tail and trotted toward her. Then the wind shifted in my direction, blowing the woman's scent to me, and I knew instantly the woman was not Connie. But last night, I slept through the night without waking in fear. I can't remember the last time I bloodied my nose or paws trying to dig out of anything, and I haven't chewed any wood or blankets in a long time. If the uncomfortable heat and dying grass are the worst things that can happen, I won't complain. There are dogs with no humans, dogs living on the street, and dogs who spend their entire lives behind fences, or worse, on chains. And there are lots and lots of dogs sniffing for bad chemicals in airports every day. I know because Connie and I often went to different airports and showed other dogs and their humans how to sniff the largest areas in the shortest amount of time. And the hot weather has at least one benefit. It seems to relieve some of my fear. The way a heating pad relaxed the muscles in Connie's back after a long day on her feet at the airport. Today should be a good day too. We're taking a car ride, not in the big vehicle with the sliding doors. Esperanza has another car, a smaller one, a lot like Connie's, and I get to ride in the front seat on Chloe's lap, and I'm the only dog in the car. Nando had to stay in the barn and Gus had to stay where he always stays in the field with his sheep. As we drive away from the farm, Chloe rolls down the window, allowing me to step on the door handle and poke my head out. My ears flap in the wind. My nose tingles from all the new smells. There's a creek somewhere in the forest near the road and lots of deer and rabbits. Look how happy she is, Mama, Chloe says as she runs a hand down my back. Mm-hmm. Esperanza keeps her eyes on the road and taps on the wheel with her thumbs. You're doing a really good job with her. She was already trained, though. Don't underestimate yourself, Chloe. She may have been trained for scent work, but you're teaching her entirely new skills, and she came to us with serious problems that some dog trainers could never cure. It's hard to understand why humans speak so many words. I wish I could tell them how much faster and easier they could gather information with their noses. I'll cure her, Chloe says as I twist my head back and forth, zeroing in on the smell of food places, traffic, and strangers building in the distance. Esperanza glances away from the winding black road, unrolling like a length of rope in front of us, her mouth straight and firm. Chloe, please. It's way too early to be certain. We'll have to try her in lots of stressful situations before we'll know for sure if her improvement is far-reaching and permanent. Just watch her today. You'll see, Chloe grasps and wiggles the loose skin on my, the back of my neck. We work our way down the mountain, stopping at many places, none of them food places, spending most of the morning getting in and out of the car. We drop off papers at one building and pick up papers at another, we even drop some of Chloe's books into a large metal container with a swinging door that looks and sounds very heavy. The special trash can is attached to a brick building with a flag waving out in front and seems to be just for books. Cocking my head, I glance from Chloe's face to the trash can, then back to Chloe's face. She isn't sad about throwing away the books she loves so much, so I go back to gathering information with my nose. Why don't we go in and sign you up for a summer reading book club? You might meet some nice kids. I'm good, Mama. I'd rather choose my own books. Then why don't we go check out some new ones, Esperanza asks. No, 
I think I'm good to reread some of my favorites to Stella. I lift one ear at the sound of my name, then go back to twitching my nose as they exchange words back and forth, back and forth. We're passing Connie's we're passing Connie's favorite food place, the one that slips a piece of meat between pieces of bread with little seeds on top. But Esperanza doesn't stop. Let me guess. Harry Potter, she asks as she drives away from the delicious place. It's like she doesn't even smell it. Chloe shakes her head. I have something I think Stella will like better. Better than Harry Potter? Yep. Percy Jackson? Esperanza turns the wheel and the car stops near a building that doesn't smell like food or books or anything very wonderful. Not even close, Chloe says. Well, then, what do you think a bomb-sniffing dog will want to read? I thought I'd start with Charlotte's Web, Chloe says, snapping my leash to my collar and opening the door. That's always a good choice, but sad. I think Stella can handle it, Mama, Chloe says. Heat rises from the pavement as we approach the store, but I don't let that stop me from sniffing. A big dog has been here ahead of us, and I wonder if this is the store Connie used to take me to with fish and birds and rows and rows of dog food. Curious, I pull toward the large sliding door. But as soon as the doors open, I know there are no interesting animals and no rows and rows of dog food. This store is all slick floors, no carpet or grass anywhere. In a place of squeaky toys and rawhides, it has rows and rows of shovels, wheelbarrows, and other tools that don't smell very good. About the most interesting odors in the whole place drift from a bags of soil and tree bark and what might be bags of horse manure. I'll never understand why humans keep their carpet so clean but they gather piles and piles of the stuff chickens and horses squat out of their behinds, mix it with dirt, and then spread it all over their yards. Despite the lack of interesting smells, I keep my nose to the ground. Humans sometimes drop food in the most unusual places. As I sniff for a dropped bit of meat, an enormous man stops me in my tracks with a loud laugh. The hair on my back bristles. You hunting rabbits now, Esperanza? He asks. My head snaps to attention. Rabbits? I don't smell rabbits. No, Vern. Just a new dog we're training, Esperanza says, her jaw tightening when she speaks. You can't train hounds. Too stubborn. The man peers into her eyes like they're in a serious game of watch me. And not too bright. Well, everyone's entitled to an opinion. Hope you have a good day. She nods and moves to step around him. This hound is smart, Chloe says in a grown-up sounding voice, and both adults turn their heads towards her. This is a working beagle. She sniffs for explosives. What's she doing here then? I don't remember any bombs in Nashville. Fireworks, maybe. The man smells sour like old meat and beneath that lies a faint trace of gunpowder. She's here because, Esperanza places a hand on Chloe's arm. She's here for agility training. The man's stomach rises and falls when he laughs. Agility? Dogs aren't meant to do tricks. They're meant to work, guard, hunt, retrieve. You should let me train the hound. Esperanza moves her hand from Chloe's arm to her back then gently pulls on my leash with the other. Thanks, Vern, but we've got it under control. We'll see you around. We head up the aisle toward stacks of cut wood and away from the towering man, but his voice follows us. Hounds will break your heart every time. They're more loyal to their noses than their handlers. You may think you've trained her, that they you can trust her off leash but give her one scent of a squirrel and she'll forget she ever knew you. When Esperanza and Chloe ignore him and keep on moving, I take that as my signal to go back to sniffing the floor for food. Unlike the animal store, there is nothing of interest underneath any of these shelves. Esperanza and Chloe are silent as they explore the next row. Without their voices to listen to, I pay closer attention to their movements. Esperanza moves in her normal way. 
but something is different about Chloe. It's not so much her movement that's strange, it's more in the way she smells. The chemical odor that's always a part of Chloe grows stronger and stronger as we head to the front of the store with Esperanza's supplies. We're almost to the beeping machine with the moving shelf when the large man with the large voice appears again. Don't forget the nephews are here until the 4th, Esperanza. They might be hunting squirrels and whatnot. Make sure your dog stays off my land. Something about the way his face pinches in on itself when he speaks to Esperanza raises my hackles. Chloe opens her mouth, but before she can speak, Esperanza says, My dogs don't go on your land, Vern. It's hard to tell where one property ends and the other begins, and there was that mutt of yours that ruined my okra last summer. The property lines where it's always been right at the creek, and that mutt didn't belong to me. Esperanza's eyes narrow. You make sure your nephews stay off our land. The man opens his mouth to speak, then seems to change his mind and walks away. I'm thankful to be rid of him. Now maybe I can help Esperanza focus more closely on Chloe. Sitting up straight with my ears raised and my mouth open a little, I try to tell Esperanza that Chloe's chemical smell is getting stronger, that something is wrong, but she doesn't know the find it and alert game or she's too distracted. I whimper as Esperanza places her items on the moving shelf. Chloe stares out the front doors. Her eyes are far away, not at all like when we play watch me. You think it's ever gonna rain? The woman in the vest behind the moving shelf asks as she takes some crinkly paper from Esperanza's hand. Whatever they're doing must be very important because humans really like their crinkly paper almost as much as they like their words in their carpet. Esperanza is giving lots of crinkly paper to the woman. Let's hope so. I'm worried about my sheep in this heat. I'm having to work the dogs early in the morning or late at night. If the weather doesn't break soon, I'm not sure if I'll be able to work them at all. Did you know we're under a forest fire warning? The woman points to a paper sticking to the wall beside her beeping machine. No, but I can believe it. Esperanza thanks the woman and collects her bags. Then we head out to the car. Chloe still doesn't look at me. Her eyes stare straight ahead like she's looking at something but not really seeing anything. And the smell coming off her overpowers everything else in the air around us. I whimper again and try to lower my behind, but I can't quite sit to alert with the leash wrapped in Chloe's small fist tugging me forward. You're fine, Stella. Come on. Nothing to be nervous about here. Esperanza walks towards the car without looking at me or Chloe. I look at Chloe's face wishing Esperanza knew the watch me game and could look at Chloe's face too. Can't she smell the chemicals on Chloe? She's way too busy placing her supplies in the back of the car. After she closes the back door, Esperanza opens the front then starts to slide in behind the wheel. When Chloe doesn't join her, she finally comes back around to look at Chloe. If Esperanza doesn't do something soon, something bad is going to happen. I know it. The chemicals are so strong. The sharp, sour smell is leaking from Chloe's body. When I bark and spin in a circle, the leash falls from Chloe's hand and slaps the ground. I try the find it and alert game again. What in the world is wrong with you, Stella? Esperanza looks at me, then Chloe, then the loose leash snaked around Chloe's feet. Her face tightens. She knows. She knows. Finally, she knows something is wrong with Chloe. And Esperanza is a top human. She'll know exactly what to do. When she reaches for Chloe's arms, I wag my tail in relief. Then Chloe's legs bend like she's going to sit down. But there isn't anywhere for her to sit. I scoot near her. If she'll look at me, maybe the blank look on her face will go away and my Chloe will come back. But Chloe doesn't look at me. She doesn't come back to me. She crumples in a silent lump on the hard pavement. I whine and nuzzle her cold fingers, really, really hoping her smell doesn't change to the outside of a human smell. I do not want anyone putting my new friend in a box.